Hey guys, it's Katie. So in this video, um, I will be showing you how to make this kind of faux leather pendant without using or buying any faux leather clay. Um, yes, you need a texture sheet, but it's pretty inexpensive and you can use it over and over and over. Um, that's on my Amazon Ambassador store, that texture sheet, but I'm sure you can find it other places as well. This is a pendant I probably made six or seven months ago for a coworker, which again I tell you about in this video. She bought it, well, I was wearing it, and she bought it and loved it, and and then just a couple weeks ago told me her sister keeps trying to steal it from her. And, I mean, these are ladies in their, like, 40s. Um, so I made her sister one. And this was another color combo I did a while back. Uh, I'm not super in love with it, but it's definitely a combo that you could do. And there's all you know, tons of combos that you could do. This is just kind of an idea to give you and I hope you enjoy watching it and I do talk to you throughout the video. So, I will see you later. I hope you have fun. Hey guys, it's Katie. So, I made a pendant a while back and before the female leather effect came out um, and I was doing like an imitation leather look and so I made this pendant and which I'll show you in the intro when I'm finished it. Um, and wore it once, and someone I saw out and about was like, I love this so much. So they bought it for me. So then, she told me a little while later, my sister loves it, and wants one the same exact thing, the same colors, everything. So I figured if I'm going to make another one, I might as well show you. And it's the end of September, and... Um, wow, that's really soft. It's the end of September, and um, Christmas is coming up, so I might as well get it going for her. So what I'm using, let me just grab some more. What I'm using is scrap clay. So initially, the colors I used was Kato Blue and the Kato White, and kind of made like a pale. So I'm thinking of leather, like in, and I wish I had it. Obviously, I don't, because I made it for me, and then she bought it for me that quickly. Um, but... I was thinking like leather purses, you know, what color leathers other than brown can you get, you know what I mean? And there's always like this pale bluish color. So that's what I'm going to try to make out of my scraps. So I have like three scraps here, three different colors, and it was more pale like this here, but I think I don't have enough of it obviously, so I'm going to mix in some more blue and some more white and we'll see what I can get out of this and see what color I get and then I can modify. So I'm going to mix up just some scrap blues I have, these different blues and might as well use them up um, and then make it a pale color. So I'm going to mix these guys all up until they're you know a homogenous mix, a fully complete mix. And then I'm also going to be using my scrap from a tutorial I did the other day, I don't, I'm not quite sure what one, I think it was a flower cane of the Ecru and White. I'm going to be using that too. Originally I just did um, pure Ecru, but I'm going to do that one with the white. So let me mix this all up, and when that's done I will be back. But again, use whatever colors you want. Um, yeah, just have fun with this, and I'll show you how we're going to do it. This is a pretty, pretty simple and easy one. This one I did not resin either. But, anyways, let me mix that. So this is the blue I got, but it's still a little dark for what I want. So I'm going to add some more white. And I might even tint it with a little bit of this Ecru to... But it's yellow, so I don't want to tint it green, you know, but I'm going to tint it a little bit. So I'm going to continue mixing this until I get a shade I'm happy with. Okay, so these are the colors I'm going to use. I have this really pale blue, and on camera it's coming up a little darker but it definitely is sky blue and then the ecru um the ecru and white mix not pure ecru pure ecru looks more like this and i kind of like it just a little paler initially i did just use pure ecru but colors are really your own your own you know just have fun with them so what you're going to need, and this is on my Amazon shop, um, my Amazon ambassador page, which if I forget to link it, please remind me. Um, I have a female effects leather texture, and that's what I used to create this, create this because they didn't have the, le 
the leather clay out yet. Plus, even if they did at this point, I'm not going to make anything with it, so I probably wouldn't purchase it. So I, this was a huge sheet, and it wouldn't even fit in my pasta machine. It was so big, so I cut up pieces. I cut a strip that would work um, and fit through my machine easily, and that's what I'm going to run this clay on. So, you know, you could do either side you want. Um, you know, if you do one side with it raised, the texture on your clay would be kind of indented, and if you do it on the side where it's all indented, the texture on your clay will be raised. So literally I just put my clay on there and I'm going to run it through the thickest setting on my machine. Um, the other thing is it can really stick to this. So either using some cornstarch, what I tend to use with these is Armor All, which I haven't used in forever. <laughs> but I have an old thing of Armor All here, just regular Armor All that I stole from our garage. and. If I can get it to come out, it's like almost empty. Hang on, I gotta tilt it a certain way. There we go. Just squirt a little bit on there. And then just massage it in with like a paper towel. I mean, you don't want like a heavy amount. You're just kind of coating this. Now remember, your clay is going to spread out quite a bit. So you want to kind of coat the whole thing. And that I find helps keeping it from sticking to this kind of plasticky material. So just set it on here. And then we're going to run it through our pasta machine on the thickest setting. So let me do that. Like this, okay? And then pull it off. See? It's pretty. I'm going to do the same thing with this one here. And it should have enough armor all on it. So let me see. See? That's how I got my leather effect. So there's all kinds of things you can do with this. But she wanted the same exact one, so I'm making the same exact one. Now the cutters I used were these here, and I believe I got these on Amazon, and I believe I've posted it, and if I haven't, it's just like a teardrop. That's all it is. If I haven't posted on Amazon, it's because I don't know where I got them. This is like one of the first cutter sets I've ever gotten. Um, and so... For this part, I used a the big one. And you can use whatever shape you want. So let me lay this on. Gently. I don't want to flatten out my texture, but I don't want to get air underneath it. My tile. Like that. And cut that guy out. Like that. Okay, and then with this one I used a smaller cutter, so let me do that, let me see what size I want to use here, was it this one, I think it might have been this one, yeah, okay, so I'll cut this guy out. Okay. And we could we could tint this with acrylic paint. You could do all kinds of things, you know, to get after it's baked to get the paint to stick down in the grooves. I mean, there's all kinds of things you could do with this. This is just kind of what I did. Actually, first, there's a little area from the seam of the cutter that looks kind of weird, so I'm just trim that up right here. Like you always get that seam. I'm going to tuck these in. I mean, this, I probably made this like eight or nine months ago, so I don't really quite remember my steps exactly what I did, but I'm assuming it's something like this. I did just post a picture of it on my Facebook page in someone's comments, and they were like, oh, how'd you make that? So I was like, well, actually on my way home today, I was thinking about making her one, and um, good time. So then we'll just, I like to set it on my, and then kind of just see if we can get it fairly centered. Just a little further.
That's fairly centered. Okay. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to make stitching. Right? It's leather. I wanted to make stitching. So, I took a needle tool, any kind of needle tool, and I made holes kind of evenly all around this. As even as I could. It's not the end of the world if they're not perfectly even because only you are going to notice the minute detail of that. So, obviously we're going to have to have a hole at the top for our bale and stuff. So that will probably go somewhere like that. <clears throat> so then from the edges over, and you could have your stitches as wide as you want, just kind of make an, a circle. Okay? And we're going to make it seem like stitching. And I'm not going all the way through it. The first time I did, but you don't need to. And I'm just kind of widening it so I can st stick a piece of clay down in there. And again, it's not like detrimental if they're perfect, perfect. I mean, you can make them perfectly far apart or evenly spaced, but you'd re you really don't need to if you don't want to. Um, just get them close. I'm not that type with my art to be that picky about it, but if you are, then do that. Before we do the stitching, I'm going to also bake this because I don't want to distort anything. I think I was doing a lot of clay embroidery at this point, so this is where this came from. Okay, so I assume you get the point. I'm going to go all the way around this. And when I'm done that, I'll be back and I'll show you what I did. Okay, so I put all the holes in. And now I usually, or what I did last time, is I took a silicone tool and just kind of continued the pattern down the sides of the... front one here just by making very gentle indents in it. That way it didn't look like it just ended on the top. Hard to do it on camera because you just want to gently pat it. I know I get quiet sometimes. Usually, like as you know, when I do this, it's really late at night, and everybody, everybody, my fiance sleeping right upstairs above me, so it's hard to stay really loud. So I apologize. No one's sleeping right now, but when I get concentrating, I kind of get quiet. Um, <clears throat> I am actually just taking a break from doing our wood. We cut and split and stack our own wood for the winter, which is a lot of work. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll get this in the oven, and I kind of like the fact that the edge has... Where I put the circles, the edge isn't quite even. I kind of like that. Um, now, the first time I did this, I did puncture, puncture the holes all the way through. And that way, when I put the stitches in, you can actually see light through it. Or 
you know, it looks like the stitch went all the way through it. On the back, it doesn't look that great. Um, but on the front, I really liked the way that looked. So I'm contemplating whether I do want to make the holes go all the way through or if I want to leave a little layer of clay. I feel like I really liked that look. So I am going to go all the way to my tile and open it up where I can see the tile down in there. Just because I remember I liked that. And you'll see once we do it, you can decide if you like that or not, obviously. Because I made one for myself as well, which I sold as well. <laughs> Both of them. Um, and that one, I didn't do it. And I remember thinking to myself, well, I did it, and then I added a backing. And I remember thinking to myself, oh, that really closed it up. I really liked being able to see behind it behind the stitches because then it looked like handmade stitching that you punched a hole through the leather all the way through the leather <clears throat> you know what I mean because when you have real leather and you're gonna punch a hole for a stitch you go all the way through the leather so I thought it lent itself to more of a natural realistic hole so I, I think I am, as I was sitting here, I was thinking, you know what, I remember liking that look. So I'm going all the way to the tile and just kind of widening my circles all the way down. And again, you are your only limit, right? You're the only one that can stop yourself. No one, no one, no one can stop you. So allow your creativity to flow. Sometimes allow yourself to be childish and creative in that way. You know, there is no one that's stopping you from doing anything. And don't allow them to either. I'm just kind of taking this silicone tool and kind of pushing down. Just because the clay kind of bumped up, and I'd rather have it pushed in, so I'm just kind of kind of setting it back down in there. I don't even think I really sanded this one. I'm gently, like very gently patting. And you can actually see the tile through that, so. Okay, I'm gonna get that in the oven. Um, 275 for a full 60 minutes because I don't believe I mean well actually I am gonna have to bake this again so I'll probably do 40 minutes and then I'll do a full 60 later so I'm gonna put this in 275 just with a piece of paper paper laying over the top of it um, for about 40 45 minutes I'll go out and do some more wood and then when that's done I will be back I'll go find if I can see one other that I made in a color combo that I didn't really love, but that's actually not that bad. Okay, I just put those in the oven, but I went upstairs and found my other one. So here's one. It's not a bad color combo. In real life, it's definitely more salmon. than It, it looks really bright orange on camera. It's definitely not really pale actually so what I'm talking about is the holes seeing the holes through I actually like that on the back you just kind of have holes 
Oh, I did texture the back on the other ones. I didn't do that on that one. Hmm. Oh well. I'm gonna have a flat back on that one. So anyways, and then this one, the color combo looked like a tongue to me. I don't know. <laughs> this looks like a tongue. So I don't really love this one. But I made it and it's done. So I guess on these, I did texture the back. I totally forgot about that. I think I might have sandwiched it in between two of these when I ran it through. I might have taken the other piece and sandwiched it. That way I textured both sides at once. I totally forgot I did that. Well, maybe I'll be making another one. Because that one's in the oven. And I don't feel like... Let me see. Hang on. Well, maybe I'll make myself a blue one. And then I'll make this lady a blue one. Let me see. Let me grab my other... I can find the other part of that texture sheet. <laughs> oh, here's one. Here it is. I mean, that texture sheet was huge. In a full size, I could not fit that in my pasta machine. Oh, way too much. That's okay. Crafting on the fly. No plans. So a little armor off. Okay. And then set that on there. And then same thing, sandwich it. And then run it through. That's what I did. So both sides are textured at once. Okay. And then and oh got it. put my cutters away. This piece again. I hope that pasta machine isn't too loud. Not that you'll see both sides of this texture, but might as well. Is my blade right there? Patting the cutter edges down because once I lay it on there, I won't be able to really clean that up. You know, and you can use any shapes you want. You could use anything you want, really. Ooh. 
Just making sure my points are fairly lined up. Okay, so I'm going to make the circles on this one too. And you could use something like just a basic needle tool. You know, like I made this needle tool with a regular sewing needle. You could use anything you want really to make the holes. Um, these are way bigger than this, so I believe. Yeah, I believe I used this guy on these here. So I'm going to make these holes and I'll get this one in the oven too and that way I have two. You know what? I was just thinking if if I hadn't already varnished this one if I would have taken some like brown paint or something and squished it down into those grooves and then wiped it off I probably would have liked that one better. The reason why I don't like this one is because this here the shape with the color looks like a tongue. I don't know why I'm seeing that. It looks like like a funky tongue. <laughs> That's the only reason why I don't like this one. I don't mind this one so much, but I was just playing with color combinations. Um, but I find that people are actually liking this color combo better. And I wish in real life you saw how pale it is, because on here it's more vibrant. Like on camera it's more vibrant, but in real life it's definitely a muted blue. Yeah, it's very muted. Okay, I'm going to get this one in the oven. So I did the same thing. I put the holes in, and now this one has texture on both sides. And um, when I come back, I will show you what we're going to do. Okay, so the one that I didn't double side is out of the oven. And I'll show you how to do this one. But again, you can double side it easily, and I quickly showed you how to do that. So the next thing I'm going to do is just widen up the holes a little bit. I already did this half and you can see how they're just a little more clear than the other half. So all I'm doing, and this needle tool is on my Amazon, it comes in a pack of something, um, is just push it in there and just stretch out the clay a little bit. And the clay will bounce back a little, but at least any like loose little flakes and stuff will come out. And that way you can completely see through it. And the next thing we're going to need is an extruder, or that's how I did it. You can roll it out by hand. I'm sure you can roll out a little sausage by hand. Um, I'm not great at getting them fairly even, so I use an extruder. Then I also did it from the front side just to... Which actually, I think I did this side already. I just don't think I did the other side. And this will just make sure the holes are clear so you can see through them. And, you know, if you want your holes further apart to get further apart stitching, go for it. If you want them closer together, put them closer together. I mean, kind of whatever look you want to get, you can get. I mean, it's pretty individual. This will just kind of show you basically how I did it, and then you can go from there. So I just kind of stretched out all the holes a little bit. And that way when we put the stitching on, you can see through it. Okay, so like these ones are closer together, these stitches, and these stitches are further apart. So again, however you want to make that look, that, that's up to you. So we have this. Now we have the color that I used here. I just put it into a little sausage and we're going to put it in the extruder. This extruder I did get off of Amazon um, and I did put that on my ambassador page so that way all of the products I order off Amazon is in one spot for everybody. Okay, I'm just going to roll it up to the end a little bit so it's closer. Now this one came with many different tips so it has sets with multiple holes and then it has just individual holes so you can use whatever you want I'm gonna use the smallest so whether you just use the one hole one or the multiple hole one it doesn't really matter but I'm gonna use the smallest size I have of each and I keep mine in an old pill bottle I mean you can buy books and things to put these in like coin books and stuff but I don't really have the money for that and I'd rather spend the money on something else this works fine for me 
So obviously the softer your clay is, the easier it is going to be to push through your extruder. If you have a really firm clay, it's obviously going to be a little harder. So you just want to make little, and this is a kind of a detailed thing to do here. Um, it definitely takes a minute, but it, it's not, you don't really have to think about it when you're doing it. You really don't have to focus on it at all. I won't need all of these, but we have them. Okay. If I can separate one at least, which is one. I'll do one on camera and then the rest I can do off camera. So now we have this little thin rod. So before I start applying it here, I want to make sure it adheres well, so I'm going to use some Bacon Bond just on a needle tool or a needle or whatever, and I'm just going to put it where the little pieces are going to go. Now the reason why I baked this first is so that way I don't distort anything, I don't flatten any texture while I'm trying to do this. You could put it on raw, just, you know, you're going to have to be more careful. So I'm just squirting out a little Bacon Bond. And then literally I'm just going to put a little bit in between each hole, like this. Pretty easy. That way there's just a little extra security that they're stuck down because the other clay's already been baked, but not fully, but been baked. It's only been baked for, you know, 40 minutes or so. Okay, so the best way I found to do this, let me zoom in a little bit. The best way I found to do this to make it look a little like the stitches are actually going through is to take, this thing's so delicate, to take your little piece and then to roll the end to make the end a little skinnier. And then you're going to stick it down in the hole. And usually this would be higher up on my, like I would be working a little closer, but I'm trying to do it on camera so it's a little bit harder. Come on. Okay, wait, hang on. Everything's harder when you're on camera. One, because you have a camera in your face and it's like having someone watch over your shoulder. get it over there and then what I used was like a needle tool and kind of just pushed it down in there like that this ecru is really soft once I get it going it won't be so bad but and I really have to remember how I did this because it's been a while so I think maybe if I remember correctly I laid it down across them and then I took either my needle tool or my X-Acto knife. Yeah, I think this is what I did. So you can see it. I went right. Right. I think that's what I remember doing. <clears throat> okay, that's as far as I'll go on camera. I'll do the rest off camera, well, maybe a couple more, so I can get where I have my bacon bond. So this will just kind of cut it so you have for each, but then I want to also fix this up a little bit 
because this doesn't look that clean right now, but it gets them kind of in the spot I need them. Okay, and then they're, right now they're just kind of all wonky in there. So then I took my needle tool and very gently kind of just clean them up. And made them actually look like they're going down in there. This is again just a needle that I put some clay on, just a sewing needle. Normally, like I said, I'd have this a lot closer to my face so I could see because right now it's kind of far away from me. I know you're zoomed in, but my eyes don't just zoom in. Oh, my fiance just got home, so the dogs might bark. So, either way, I'm just kind of pushing them in unlike down here I'm just kind of pushing them in there a little bit so that way there's like gaps between them and you can actually see through them you know and I'll I'll make sure there's none of it on the sides on the sides here I'll scrape it with the tip of my needle and kind of feather it in a little bit I'll tilt in the clay so it looks like it's actually going down the hole, you know. So I'm going to continue smoothing these out and kind of pushing them down in and and then when I'm done that I'll be back and I'll show you. Now obviously these are close together stitches but again you can have further apart stitches if you want. Okay so I'm going to finish doing that. You don't need to watch here, sit here and watch me do this for 20 minutes but that's what I'm just going to continue doing. Okay. Okay so I got that one side done and remember um, you can bake at any point in time. You do not need to... So if you're worried about doing the other side and holding this and accidentally squishing it or something, feel free to bake it quickly to get it to be stationary. I mean, you can always bake at any point and continue on. Um, so don't feel like you're stuck. The other thing was I've never applied texture to these, so I'm curious if I apply a little texture how that would look. But I'm going to have to do it very gently. So I have some different things here. This is a headband that I cut. It was like a headband. These have textures. Um, let's see. I have this bag, almost similar to like a burlapy kind of. I have a piece of my dog collar, an old dog collar. I have a piece of rope here. I could use a sponge. But you're going to want to be gentle about it, but I didn't know if adding a little texture to it might be. Let's see what this does. But I'm going to just be gently. This might be too. Let me. Oh, I wonder if a sponge would be better. Or something like this. Let me see. Where's a piece of my sponge? Here's a piece of the sponge. Let's see. I don't want to flatten them, so I'm just going to be lightly. giving them a little bit, just very gently.
See if I can even get any on there with how gently I need to be, or with how gentle I need to be. I can see it in real life. Okay, so I am going to bake that. I don't want to risk um, squishing it. And remember, we're all looking at minor details. The person wearing this is going to be looking at this as a whole. So they're not going to be looking at the little minor details. We do that because we're creating it. But they're not going to do that. Okay, they're not looking at each individual stitch because they're not the one making each individual stitch. We are. So we nitpick and nitpick and nitpick when I guarantee you most people will not see that. Okay. And look at it from further away too because you're not going to be looking at this from really close up, you know, your eyes aren't, someone's going to be looking at this from across the room, not two inches from their face most of the time. Okay, I'm going to bake that again, um, for again, just another quick 20 minutes or something, just to get it to firm up, and then I'll do the other side. I'll be back. Okay, so I have one, one done. And I have one that I got to finish. This is the one that I, I did it on both sides here. So it's not completely done. I also did a slightly darker blue. And that way she can pick. Um, this is the one we made together where I didn't do both sides. So definitely run it through with two pieces. One on either side of the clay. And that way you'll get a back texture as well. Um, I also made a plain ecru piece just to test it to see. I'm light, waiting for this paint to dry. And then we'll wipe it off. But I want to show you how I would finish this one. I'm going to bring you over my lap because I'm going to use my Dremel. Um, and it's easier for me to use that way. So this is my Dremel 4000. It's reconditioned by Dremel. I bought it on Amazon. It was cheaper because it was a refurbished one. Um, I generally work between around speed 15. But when I was newer, I definitely did more around speed 10 until I got confident with my machine. Um, I'm going to use my orange tip and then my white one to polish with. I believe these are like cotton wheels but they're on my um, ambassador page. So pretty much all this will do, I know my drip keeps opening, that's where I keep my oil paints, is pretty much clean up these scraggedy edges. Um, I'll polish this back so you can see how it would look. This back I would actually need to sand. Um, and I'll kind of polish and buff everything up just to smooth it. So here it is before smoothing. And then we'll just varnish this. I'm not going to resin this. I'm just going to varnish this. Okay, ready? So here we go. I'm going to just clean up my edges and, and buff this up. And I actually will probably do kind of a fast forwarded version. As I do the edges, I will choke up on my machine and use my thumb and I'll usually pull towards me and smooth it up that way, okay?
Okay. So this one's buffed up here. And you kind of have to imagine this front with this back because it's not done yet. This front one's not done here. This is the one I'm making for her so it has texture on both the front and the back. Now I don't bake on paper because I don't mind that the texture is shiny on the top. Um, if you baked it on paper it'd probably more look like this but you still see that just on the tips of the raised areas are what really got buffed when I buffed it. So, you know, to me, I don't mind that, but that's that's your call. I mean, it is just the back. You're not staring at the back. This one, because I didn't put the texture on the back, it has the tile, texture from the tile. So this one, I will sand the back before I buff it, just on some sandpaper. Probably four, six, eight, one thousand, probably only up to fifteen hundred. Um, just to smooth that down, because I'll wear this one. Now this, yeah, this is dry. I just wanted to see what it would look like if you tinted it with some acrylic paint. So I just put a brown on here. Just trying to wipe a little bit of it off. So if you used, you know, you could use any color paint, any color clay. I just wanted to see how the if you highlighted the texture a little bit and depending on what you wipe off will depend on the look you get. So you can wipe it off quite a bit. Just stain it a little bit. So that's really up to you on how on what you want to do with it. So I just wanted to see what it looked like if I were to do that. But like she said, she wanted to make the same exact one because she her sister tried to steal it from her. And they're like in their f late 40s, I'd say. <laughs> yep, okay. So um, all we need to do now on this one, the one I'm going to wear, is drill a hole. And, oh, actually, I varnished these. Now, let me see. I don't think I did a matte varnish. I don't believe, but I'm not, I don't really remember either. So let me grab a couple of my varnishes and see. Because usually I resin, because I like the way resin looks, but with this, I didn't really want that look. I used to have a tester piece when I first started ordering different glazes. I used to have a tester piece that I tested them on, and I can't find it anywhere. It's probably because I haven't used it in so long. Um, so I have two of the Sculpey ones here, which are fairly common and easy to find. Um, one's a gloss glaze and one's a satin. I think I'm going to use a satin. I have a feeling, just gut feeling, that that's what I used. Because it's supposed to be leather, you know, it's not really shiny. So I'm going to use the satin and we'll see how that looks. I mean, I guess I could also always do another layer with a gloss if I really wanted that. So I'm just taking an old paintbrush. I've probably had this for eight or nine years. And, oh, why is it wet? Oh, from the baby wipe. It's wet. We're just going to literally just coat this over. And that way it's sealed. Um, some people would say you don't need to. The reason why I like to put something on it, so this is just from my personal experience, and I know some people would think something was wrong, but... I made a, let me finish glazing this and show you. So I made a cabochon, right? And it was super shiny and gorgeous and felt smooth and it was the most beautiful thing ever, I thought. I have one of its brothers or sisters down here. You know, I spent, I, I think I sanded all the way up to the 10,000 and then I buffed it. It was one of the first cabochons I made. I loved it. I wore it and then I misted myself at work without really paying attention with my perfume like real perfume, not like a body spray, real perfume, and just kind of like on my neck area, right? And I only wear a 16 inch cord. And so I misted myself. And then, I don't know, some reason a couple hours later I went to touch it and it, it didn't feel smooth anymore. And then I looked and the, the shine, there was dots. You could see where the perfume had t like dotted on it. The perfume reacted with the polymer clay some way. I, I have no clue how, I have no clue why. 
it just reacted and kind of took the shine off of it. And I hadn't glazed it with anything. I had just, or I hadn't sealed it with anything. I had just um, sanded and buffed the clay. That was it. And so now I tend to like to finish things, especially if I'm not keeping it for myself. Because with that piece, it's not a big deal. I can just rebuff it, you know what I mean, with the piece that I wore that day. I can just rebuff it up. But if I had sold that to someone, they don't have, most likely, they don't have a Dremel there to buff it up themselves. So, you know what I mean? So I really should have put something on. And actually, I believe, so this is like the brother or sister to it. Um, and I actually believe this is just sanded. But I believe on that one I put Renaissance wax. And then like I said, when I, see the reason why I hadn't worn this one is because I had an indent right in the middle there. And I probably could get that off if I smoothed it even more. But. I even put Renaissance, I believed Renaissance wax on the other one. And like I said, it looked like I had splashed like, oh, and I think the alcohol in it reacted with the clay. I don't know for sure, but something happened. So this shine was completely gone. It was like completely gone. And so that's why I like to finish things or to some kind of sealer on them just to, I don't know, just to hold it up. So we'll see how this looks. I don't know if this is going to be this shiny. I didn't really want it this shiny, so maybe I did use a mat. So let me let this dry, and then I'll find my mat, and I might coat that with matte because I don't want really want this kind of shine. You know what I mean? It kind of looks like plastic. So let me go find my matte glaze, and I'll let this finish drying and see what it's going to do. So like I said, this one's for me, so... It is what it is. I'm going to take this little tester piece that I just tinted, so I know it's not perfect. And I also have this li liquid, I can't even say it, you can read, matte varnish that I have never tried and I bought it. And I'm going to try it right now and we'll see how that looks. And I'm just going to do it on a tester piece and that way I can figure out, and I can also write on here, like, why can't I say it? I can't even say it right now. In my head I can see it, but out loud I can't. Oh my god. But I can even write the name on here so in the future I have a reference back to what what varnish I'm going to, if I don't resin, what they're going to look like. Um, so let's see what this looks like. I just shook it up a little bit. Let's see how this looks when it dries. Because I haven't finished the piece I'm going to give her. So I need to finish this piece and buff it as well and then I'll varnish her piece and give it to her and I'll see what one I want to use on it. Okay. So again, this is just this matte varnish here. Permanent varnish, non-glare matte finish, interior and exterior use, protects against UV damage, translucent when wet, dries clear, matte reduces color intensity, permanent non-yellowing, flexible and water resistant when dry, gently stir before use, do not thin with water, apply at least two thin coats, allow for a minimum of three hours of drying between coats for best results, apply First coat of gloss varnish. Do not mix with oils. It's because it's water base. So I'll wait for this to dry and then I'll finish this other pendant and then when I come back I'll show you guys the difference. I may even try to apply this over the coat of the Sculpey and see what that does because already I can tell even where it's wet it has more of the finish I want. Let me see. Let's see. I mean it can't hurt, right? I guess I could always make another one if I really want one for myself. So let's 
let's apply it over this and see what happens. You know, the only way you're going to know for sure is by trying things out. You know, like someone asked the other day, should I sand this first before I buff it? And I was like, so get a jug piece. We all have those pendants that we don't like that we're like, okay, I'm never wearing that. Get Keep those. Don't throw those out. Use those to test things on. Um, test varnishes, test things, and write it down. If you're trying out new products, you know, paint it on or do whatever the product is. Let it sit there for four or five, six months. See if it reacts with the clay or not. You know, so keep those old junk pieces and see what actually happens. You know, like I told her, take some of your junk pieces, sand them, and then buff them. And then varnish it. See see the difference. See if you like it more when you sand and buff. See if you don't like it more. You know, or see if, you know, you like it less or whatever. I mean, the only way you're going to know, because seeing things on camera is way different than seeing things in person. Way different. I mean, I even have coworkers that go, oh, that was a cute pen. And then, you know, I go to work and I wear it and they're like, oh my God, that's so different. You know, they didn't expect it to look the way it did in person. Not like different bad. They're like, it's different from what I thought it was going to look like on t on Facebook. wasn't different bad it's just the camera doesn't always pick up and the video doesn't always pick up what you're gonna get and your results are gonna be different depending on the products you use so and the clay you use and just like with any art you know depending on what you use specifically is gonna change per person your sanding technique your buffing technique you know that's gonna vary all your finishes so Try them on your junk pieces, on the pieces that you bake that you go, oh my god, I'm so not happy with that. Keep those in a little box, and that's what you do your tests on so you know what you're happy with. Okay, I'm going to let that dry. Look at this one already dried. This is the side I did. Yeah, that's more what I wanted. I didn't really want a finish. I just wanted to seal it, and you can't even see it, so maybe this will dull this down a little bit the shine down a little bit we'll see okay I'm gonna finish up this one and then I'll buff it the same way and then I'll probably apply the vat varnish and once that's done we'll drill a hole and put a bale on and this project will be done it's a pretty easy project yeah that's getting rid of some of that shine so that's good because this will be mine to wear Hey guys, so one of the one I'm going to wear is completely done where I didn't do the back to where I'm happy to wear it. Yes, I just did my nails. I know they're still, once I take a shower that will all come off, but I haven't done this ombre technique in a while, so they will get all cleaned up once I take a shower, it will all peel off. Um, so try not to let, let that distract you. So this is the one for my coworker, um, her sister. I buffed it just like we did the other one and then I applied the matte glaze just like we did on the other one as well so they both have the matte now we're gonna drill the hole so this is the pin drill and I do have this one on my Amazon account it has a twisty base the reason for that is you put that in your palm and then you can just twist your fingers and you don't have to twist your whole hand okay this by twisting this part opens and closes the chuck if you twist it one way it'll close it and if you open it, they'll open it. Um, it's a pretty cheap one. It came with multiple size drill bits. I do also have on my Amazon page a bigger set of drill bits because sometimes the smaller ones can break. Um, so I found a set that does fit these. It is a big set and it probably has sizes I won't ever need for clay. But it is what it is. So I generally always start with my smallest size bit. The reason for that is there's less risk of, I find, there's less risk of it cracking. And this is all my personal opinion. Anything I ever say is just my personal opinion. Now, I have seen people go right to the larger size. When I did that, when I first started, I would crack a piece, or I did crack a piece. So I've just always gone from the smaller size and worked my way up. It's pretty easy to drill, and once you get a first hole, it's like nothing. Um, 
even going from the smaller size up the other day I cracked a piece and it wasn't that I cracked the clay is I cracked the resin and because I did um, the leaf underneath it and the leaf and the resin peeled off so and I was really close to the edge on that one um, it happens and I showed in that video how to fix it or how I fixed that one where it was but that was the first one I've cracked in five or six months so anyway so usually I have my smallest size on here um, you're gonna just want to find where you want to drill the hole I'll probably put it down here and then I usually just make like a score mark or something I know that's where I put the first hole when I was showing you guys where the center would be and then let me just get it back in the position you're just gonna drill and because there's no resin on this this is gonna drill really easy now polymer clay if baked properly should be flexible you would rather have your clay flexible than overly rigid and have it snap on you it is a plastic type material so it is going to be flexible but that's okay that's what it's meant to do I wanted to finish this tutorial before I got in the shower so sorry about the nails you'll see them in the next video because I'm already working on another one um, I decided to do this one after the fact to get the piece done for my coworker, um, and you'll see in that video when they're all cleaned up and not a mess. These two are the same size. So. And so play with colors on this, play with shapes, play with all kinds of things. This is just, you know, using a texture sheet really and adding some stitching to make it look a little more realistic quote unquote so I mean how long did that take me really you know 30 seconds to go through up all my sizes for less risk of it breaking and I don't think this would break honestly it's nicely baked it's nice and flexible I don't think this would break um, but ones that I've had borders on the borders chipped off or it's kind of more different situations um, I don't think I have one out usually the ones that have chipped are ones that I've put something on the side and it's not the piece that breaks it's the side that breaks off okay so I have a six millimeter jump ring here this is just my smallest size that I have so that's what I'm going to use because this is a pretty thin piece it's nice and lightweight which is what I like I don't like when pieces are too heavy um, the way you open a jump ring the openings at the top Ideally, you would grab, and these pliers are my favorite pliers. I have tons of pliers, and I bought these at the art store, and I was like, oh my god, I love them. They spring back nicely. They squeeze easily. They have a nice bent tip, um, and they fit really well in my little hands. Some of them are so wide, it's like really hard to squeeze them because they're really wide, you know, and I have small hands. So I ordered actually another set on Amazon, and I did put that on my ambassador store. So when you open a jump ring, you're going to be twisting front to back, not pulling it apart. Okay, so twist front to back to open. Slide your jump ring in the hole. Put your bail on. And then grab it again. And ideally, you want to have more of your plier touching. So if you grab it like this, you're more apt to distort your jump ring you know with the tips like this that's the way you would think to do it but when I was watching some chain mail and learning how to do chain mail they actually showed to do it like this to grab it with the wider part of your plier then you're going to twist again front to back to close make sure it's nice and even and yes you can twist this to get the the seam to height in your hole but honestly this is going to spin around that that seam will come out and then there's the piece just like that and then here's mine so just a lighter color and I put that style bail on it so I'll put it on a cord and I will show you guys so here it is finished and when I made this I made this for summertime and with nice tan skin I was thinking light colors oops. you know what I mean that's what I was oops, thinking when I when I made this, I made this hmm, probably in May, and it's now September. So I was thinking like 
summertime, like what you, you know what I mean? And that's why I did the light blue for her. And she's like, oh my God. When she saw it, you know, I was wearing it at work. And she's like, oh my God, that was going to look so great on me on vacation. You know, with a nice summer dress and nice tan skin. And it really does. It looks great. So, um, and she's worn it all summer pretty much. And she's like, my, the other day we had an office party. She's like, my sister really wants that. She said she keeps trying to steal it from me and I won't let her. And so here's the, the back on that one. So not much going on in the back. I'm going to grind in my name on it um, because I didn't stamp my name into it. And then here's the one I made for myself that I didn't do the back. So I usually keep the ones that are either a little messed up or I forgot to do something like this one. I forgot to sandwich it in the texture sheet so it doesn't have the greatest back. I'm okay with that. I wouldn't sell it to someone like that. I'd either add another layer if I had forgotten. I would put a textured layer on it. Um, but Okay. And let me quickly show you how I'm going to just put my initials into it. Obviously, this is a local person and they know who I am. But what I would do is I have a set of these round burrs, okay? And I got these on Amazon and if you want me to... Um, post a link to these on my ambassador page. I don't think I have, but I can. And they're really, really little tiny round burrs. And these are actually diamonds, diamond burrs. Um, you can use a round carbide. You can use any kind of skinny burr you want. And some of these are too skinny to fit my Dremel, so all I do is wrap it with a little masking tape. So if you ever get a burr, if it's too wide, it's too wide. But if it's too skinny, you can wrap a little masking tape around it, and that will actually hold it in because I don't know how wide this thing is you know when you're ordering them I don't know how skinny this thing can go let me see if I need to do that with this one yeah see it's all the way closed and it's too loose so what I'll do let me see if I have it right here so I can just show you that because it's a helpful little tip to know just in case you order a set of burrs and your rotary tool won't close enough Sometimes they're too wide, but in cases where they're too small, just this is just cheap masking tape. Just so it has something to grip onto. Just wrap a little masking tape around it, like this. So it's a little wider. Sometimes you have to do more than one layer. Let's see what that does. So I'm holding my lock button down and unscrewing it. Now it's really tight. I'll set that in there. And it's locked. Okay. And then I'll flip this. And this is, again, a little hard to do, especially when the camera is going to be in my way. I'm just going to carve in KG. And generally, because it's kind of rough, and I'll show you, hang on, I'll show you in just a second. Let me get this bit out of here. Okay, let me show it up close here. Because it's a little rough, I'm going to take my polishers on. So let me grab them, and I'll buff it up. And I really don't want it to be noticeable. I could take some um, an alcohol ink marker and tint it a little bit if I wanted to. But that's nice and smooth. You know, I don't really want someone to have my, if this happens to flip around, which because I put a pendant or a bail right at the top, 
it doesn't really flip. Mine don't flip at least. Um, I do only wear it on a 16 inch chain, sometimes 18, but they don't really flip. But if it happens to flip, I don't want my name showing on her. Like, it's one thing if it's on me, but if it's on her, like, who wants someone's name on them? You know what I mean? And it's not, it's kind of nondescript, you know? I do have some alcohol ink markers, which we're going to be doing more with later um, in some upcoming projects that I, I want to show you guys. But let me um, see if I can find them real quick. <clears throat> And I could use a blue and tint it. And I will be showing you guys these later. Just tint down in there. Make sure to rub it. I can varnish that in, but if it comes off, it comes off. I'm not overly worried. Okay. I will see you guys next time.